Hi, everybody. Good Friday evening to you, and welcome to VitefortBend.com coverage of Fort Bend County football. It's tonight the Travis Tigers taking on the George Ranch Longhorns in the second district game for both of these teams. They both won their openers and are feeling pretty good about their playoff chances. I'm Roger Smith here at Hall Stadium. We've got clouds overhead, but we think we're going to stay dry. You know, dry as far as rain is concerned, but there's a good chance that uh, the high humidity may make us sweat a little bit, and hopefully we'll have a dramatic game that'll make us sweat a little bit. Travis comes in at 2-2 two and two overall. George Ranch 3-1 and one overall, but both teams 1-0 and oh in district play, and they were playoff qualifiers last year, but they didn't even play each other because of all kinds of COVID interruptions. Man, I'm tired of talking about that. But we'll be back with a countdown to kickoff show. VibeFortBend.com broadcasts of Fort Bend County, uh, County High School Sports are brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome. By First Tyrant Automotive. Make sure your vehicles are in shape for the fall. First Tyrant Automotive has four great locations, including First Colony, Greatwood, Eldridge Road in Sugarland, and also in Katy Cinco Ranch. All of those locations open Monday through Saturday. For the best prices on tires, go to FirstTyrantAuto.com. By Nick's Italian Restaurant on FM 1464 in Sugarland, just a few hundred feet north of Austin High School. At Nick's Italian Restaurant, their family gets bigger every time you stop by. And it's not far from Travis High School. You ought to go there soon if you're a Travis supporter. By Archer Volkswagen on the southbound side of Highway 59, just inside the Sam Houston Tollway. Open since 1956 and ready to serve you. You'll feel like family at Archer Volkswagen. By the Needville Insurance Agency, Bradley Stavenaugh and his team are your hometown trusted agents. Sure, Flo's funny, the gecko's cute, but they don't have the best rate for you. You won't find it in your mailbox either. You need to find it with the Needville Insurance Agency. Call 979-793-7411 or visit needvilleinsurance.com. You got teenage drivers, you need to cut those bills. Call Bradley's 979 793 7411. And Office Depot in Sugarland, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace, taking care of business every day so VitefortBend.com can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. We'll be back with Nick Cavallo, head coach of the George Ranch Longhorns, when we continue on VitefortBend.com. Travis and George Ranch on your way in just a few minutes. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. back everybody this is the countdown welcome back everybody this is the countdown to kickoff show hope you're having a good Friday night where you wherever you are and we're gonna have one here at Hall Stadium because we've got high school football it is George Ranch taking on Travis and it's time to visit with Nick Cavallo the head coach of the Longhorns coach Cavallo You've had a full season in District 26A, playing against the Fort Bend teams, and a, a game or two here now in the district season of 2021. Is it kind of what you expected? Are there some surprises that you've seen in taking on the Fort Bend teams? Uh, no, I think it's kind of exactly what we expected. We knew it's a tough district. Uh, this will be our first time, you know, seeing Travis in person, obviously, last year with the zone play and everything. Uh, so we're excited for that. But, you know, we knew we were going to be in when we came into the district uh, against some tough, talented, athletic groups, well-coached uh, teams, and uh, just excited for this great night of football tonight. Travis didn't really look like the Travis we've come to know over the first three or so weeks of the season in pre-district. And they had a game where they really broke out offensively last week, although I don't think they, they faced you know, a team that was really ready for them. But I think this is going to be a great matchup tonight. 
what bothers you about Travis? What what makes them a cause for concern, and what do you expect to happen tonight? Uh, well, I think you know, kind of like what we do, and a couple of the other teams. You see, Rich Point does it, and Elkins does it. They play a tough uh, non-district schedule, so I think that's a little skewed sometimes when when you know if you're struggling early on because of the high-level playoff quality opponents that you play. Uh, so we expect them to continue rolling from what you saw from last week. Uh, you know, we they're really tough with that quarter. We feel like he'll probably be the best quarterback we face to date. Um, and just got to be able to contain him and do some things to get him uncomfortable and keep him off the mark. Uh, and then def uh, offensively on the end, we just got to be able to control the ball, run the football, um, and get them kind of on their heels and not let them sit back and tee off and uh, bring pressures and do the things that they like to do and fly around. So. Well, since the end of last season, I know you kind of have a known quantity with your team because you got plenty of practices in. As, as far as I know, there were few, if any, COVID interruptions to all of the work that you have done since last football season ended. Is there anything that has pleasantly surprised you where you're getting some contributions from guys that maybe you didn't realize they were as good as they've shown to be? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we have a strong senior class of guys that have played a lot of football, but we also have a mix of about eight or nine uh, to ten sophomores that are playing that, that have uh, early on showed a lot of progress um, and have gotten better week in and week out, and you kind of see that they've, their role has increased uh, each week, so we're excited to see how they continue to mesh with the senior leadership. All right. Thanks very much for visiting with us. We know we'll see you again before it's all over. As Nick Cavallo of George Ranch, good luck tonight. All right. Thank you for everything y'all do, and let's have a good night. All right. We'll be back to talk to Trey Sissom, head coach of the Travis Tigers, when we return on the Countdown to Kickoff show on BipeFortBend.com. First Iron Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com. Welcome back to the Countdown to Kickoff show. It's George Ranch and Travis in the second district game for both teams. And here to introduce himself and the rest of the officiating crew is our referee. Eric Dematre, referee. Umpire, Lonzi Helms. Head linesman, Tyler Dable. Line judge, Brad Slay. Side judge is Bill Condy. Field judge is Jason Gould. And our back judge is Jeremy Bosley. All right, thank you, Mr. Dematre. Hopefully we can stay dry here tonight at Hall Stadium. A few clouds up overhead. They don't look too threatening, but I've said that before and I've had to change my assessment. We'll be back with our visit with Trey Sissom, head coach of the Travis Tigers, when we return on VipeFortBend.com. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464 just north of Austin High School. Can't sign in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. Welcome back to the floor of Hall Stadium. We're almost ready. Travis Tigers and George Ranch Longhorns. And it's time to visit with the always gregarious, always happy, seemingly, Trey Sissom, head coach of the Tigers. Talk about the week of practice that you had before this very crucial district game against a quality opponent. Yeah, thank you, Roger. I mean, it's been a, it's been a great week for us. Uh, you know, we're coming off a couple of wins and got a little bit of momentum, and uh, we're finally getting healthy. Uh, so the kids have had they've had a they've had a good uh, a good week. Uh, even though with the rain and all the other stuff going on, we've been able to get out and get the work in. So we're excited to get to play a, a really, really, really good George Ranch team tonight. And it is kind of refreshing because uh, you kind of had your opponent outmanned last, last week and it was a, a one-sided win. 
is there anything you can do to just kind of keep the sharpen the razor's edge when you didn't have that much uh, resistance from the other side the week ago? I think so. I mean, you know, we we all sit down and watch the film, and, and uh, as coaches, we're probably a lot more critical than, than uh, other people might be. So we, there was a lot of things that we had to work out, even in a, in a good win uh, that we had against Austin. And, and you know, and, and we know uh, with our kids uh, going against George Rance tonight, and uh, they're, they're a very, very well-coached team. Uh, they've got a couple of great players that, uh, that you know, are going to be tough for us to match up against. Uh, so we gotta be uh, we got to be playing our best football tonight to have a chance. All right. Don't forget, Travis fans, we are going to do every single Travis Tigers game the rest of the regular season, and then hopefully multiple games in the playoffs. That would be good. <clears throat> yeah, you know, that's kind of the goal. This is one of those This is one of those unique situations early on where you get a, a tough, tough district game like this that really has a lot of uh, a lot of playoff implications, and we're only in week six. But uh, we're excited to be here and hoping to play, uh, play a whole lot more too, Raj. Thank you. All right. We really do appreciate it. That is Trey Sissom. Always enjoy the visit. And we'll be back and get this one underway. George Ranch against Travis. Each team is undefeated in district. And this one should be fun. And we're hoping it'll be pretty close, too. Roger Smith with you, VipeFortBend.com, here at Hall Stadium. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Our coverage brought to you by Xfinity. First Tire and Automotive. Wait till you hear about their October specials. Also, the Needville Insurance Agency. Nick's Italian Restaurant on FM 1464, just a few hundred feet north of Austin High School. We're also brought to you by Office Depot that takes care of business every day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. And finally, we're brought to you by Archer Volkswagen. Go see them. You will feel like family when you're there. Open since 1956. They're just inside the Sam Houston Tollway on the southbound side of Southwest Freeway. Archer Volkswagen. We'll be right back. Thanks for being with us on BikeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Welcome back. The captains are in the middle of the field meeting with Eric Dematre, our referee tonight. The coin is in the air. Of course, those of you who are real insiders know that this is just ceremonial. It means nothing. Now, the toss was won by George Ranch, but they decided to defer, and they will take their choice at the beginning of the third quarter, and the Travis Tigers will get the ball first. The, tra the captains for Travis were Dominic and Anthony Njoku, Aaron Mendiola, and Dylan Kinney. And the captains for George Ranch, Carnard Bailey, Judson Mixon, Jaden Young, and David Walker. So Travis will be trying to move left to right. That is, they will defend the north goal at Hall Stadium. And I believe our temperature is 79 degrees at game time. Double check that. Now it's down to 77, so it is cooling off quickly here in Missouri City. Out in the sticks, down Highway 6. Travis wearing its entire scarlet uniform, pants and jerseys with the silver numerals and the silver helmets, red stripe down the middle, and the block T on either side. And the George Ranch Longhorns, their primary color is maroon, but the only real part of their uniform that's maroon is the numbers. White jerseys with maroon numerals, black pants, black helmets. And as we mentioned just a few minutes ago, Travis and George Ranch did not play each other last year in the pre-district games. We'll give you some further numbers as we get this game going and kind of tell you what we, what we might be able to expect. The records again, Travis 2-0, George Ranch 3-1, both teams 1-0 in district. Ridge Point is off this week, and Ridge Point leads the district with a record of 2-0. Travis on offense, since they'll get the ball first, they average 309.75 yards per game, and they score 28 points per game. George Ranch moves the ball at 30, 356 yards per game, and they score 33.5 per game. So Longhorn scoring a little bit more. 
early in the season. And here we are. This is week six. Time flies when you're having fun. David Michel to kick off. A left footer. Tees it up at the 40 and blasts it down the field. And it goes way over to the right. And it's going to be returned by Carmelo Ratliff. Here goes Carmelo trying to get across the 15. Great coverage by these George Ranch Longhorns. They look fired up. And it was Kevin Odikpo who got to the ball first. But he also had company Andrew Pisk. I'm sorry, I believe it's Syke. I remember that from last year. Andrew Syke and Ke uh, Kevin Odikpo, one after another on the roster. Travis likes to throw the football a lot. They have four receivers in the pattern, three on the right, and their quarterback is Anthony Njoku. He drops back, gets rid of it quickly, and a quick catch made on about a little five-yard comeback route. It was Drew Sissom who got a lot of action last week in the Austin game that was a huge blowout, 68 to nothing. And he went to his knee to make that catch. He was down immediately. Give him four on the catch, and it's second down and six. George Ranch band making the noise. Here we go. And Joku, quarterback draw. Up the middle he goes, and he's tripped near the line of scrimmage. It looked like he might break it for a bigger gain, but he only ends up taking it out to the 27, and it's going to leave him with a third down and two. Travis often plays, uh, you know, with that pace. But I think that sometimes on a third down, such as this one, they do huddle up. But they do have a bunch formation heavy on the right side. It's a toss sweep coming to the right. It is Singletary. He's fighting. He came out to the 29-yard line. That is going to be incredibly close for the first down. I just don't know if he does it. The sticks are over on the far sideline. And they eyeball it from over here on this side of the numbers, right in front of the Travis bench. And it is a first down. That's a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. First down and 10 from the 29. And Joku looks left, can't find anyone. Now he's going to run, trying to get out of the traffic. And he's going to end up picking up three, maybe four yards as he struggles forward. Several George Ranch Longhorns are there. And the ball came out and was scooped up by Garrison Backers, but the play had ended, and there's a flag in there. I wonder if George Ranch is going to get flagged because the whistle was blowing, and they kept, you know, giving Anthony Njoku the business. And we'll see what our referee Eric Dematre says. He's talking it over. Well, we, we heard him. We didn't really hear him that well, but it was a personal foul against George Ranch. That walk-off puts the ball at the 48-yard line with a fresh set of downs for the Travis Tigers. Carmelo Ratliff, the freshman, one of three receivers on the left side of the formation. Drew Sissom, a junior quarterback in waiting, son of the head coach, is one of those three receivers. Dropping back is Njoku, throws it for Singletary, and I don't think Singletary was expecting the pass that quickly. It went through his hands, incomplete, second down and 10. This George Ranch defense gives up 243 yards average per game. And as far as points, their usual yield is 21 and a half points. They are plus three in the turnover category, but they have not had any interceptions. The star of last year's secondary was Stephen Woods Jr., son of the head Hightower basketball coach. Empty backfield for Njoku. Quarterback draw worked okay the first time, but he stopped for a loss of two on this particular play. Judson Mixon, one of the captains, came through to get him, and it's going to be an obvious passing down. Third down and 12 for the Tigers. We're just underway. 9.24 to go. In quarter number, way, uh, quarter number one, no score between the Tigers and the Longhorns. And Joku with three receivers on the left, Singletary in motion. He drops back, looks right now over the middle, and it's over the head of Ratliff, incomplete. He could have run a long way with that. It just sailed a little bit. He was at about the 30-yard line, and he had a step on Garrison Backers. But it's going to be time for Antonio Rubio to come on and punt it. 
Rubio averages 36.25 yards per punt. His long on the season was 51 yards, and Joseph Wilson will be back to return it. He's standing just inside his own 21. Really no wind to speak of that will affect this punt. It's a waist-high snap, and Rubio gets it away. A little bit of a whirly bird, and Wilson, the fair catch called for and made at the 24, and that is where these George Ranch Longhorns will take over on offense for the first time. As we mentioned before, they average 356 yards per game, and they score 33.5 points per game. Their main man is the running back Hyman Drinkard, 398 yards in their four games. A 4.19 yards per carry average, seven touchdowns, and he's only fumbled once. He wears number three. His backfield mate is Jaden Shelton. We'll talk about him. He's just a sophomore and very talented. And the quarterback is Cole Murphy in the spread formation. First and 10 from the 24. And Drinkard went in motion, but there is a flag. I'm not sure what it was for, but I... It's got to be against George Ranch because it's pre-snap. So when the Longhorns throw the football, Cole Murphy has been pretty sharp. 62% passer, 64 completions in 103 attempts. 792 yards in those four games. Seven touchdown passes and two picks thrown. So the new line of scrimmage after that false start penalty is the 19, first down and 15. Murphy bobbles the snap, hands it off to Drinkard, runs into a bunch of traffic, doesn't get too far, gets about three yards, and he's wrapped up by a guy that we highlighted last week. Very talented sophomore, Thomason Olarun Femi. And after that pickup of three, it's going to be second down and 15. Their best receiver is Edwin Avalos. I'm, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong line. Joseph Wilson actually is their best receiver with 29 catches. Averages about 11 yards per catch and has a couple of touchdowns. On second and 12, Murphy drops back, stands strong, now running to his right, looking down the field near the sideline. Ball tipped and intercepted by Travis at the 40-yard line. They get the first turnover of the game. And it's Dominic Njoku. His brother Anthony has thrown a pass or two and now he picks one off. And it'll be great field position for these Tigers. They'll mark it at the 41 yard line. By the way, Njoku leads the team in rushing with 6.04 yards per carry. He's scored five touchdowns in passing. He's a 53 percenter. 41 completions in 77 attempts. Empty backfield, he drops back. Here comes the rush, steps up. Throws it late over the middle and a little bit behind his receiver and incomplete. He tried to deliver to Gabriel Van Wick. Second down and 10. Njoku, five touchdown passes on the season and no interceptions. It's a homecoming crowd for the Travis Tigers. I know who the king and the queen are, but they haven't been announced, so I can't tell you yet. 7.59 to go in quarter number one, no score. And Joku hands it off in the draw, play to Singletary, crashes ahead, and it's going to be a short gain. He was wrapped up by David Walker and several friends for the George Ranch Longhorns. Their primary color is maroon, yet they're the Longhorns, and most of their uniforms, both in football and volleyball, they have more black than maroon. But I think that's just the style here in the 2020s. Wow, is it that late already? Third down and seven after that run by Singletary. Ball on the left hash as Travis goes left to right, and Joku climbs up in the pocket, breaks a tackle, but can't break two more. And he goes down at the 34-yard line. He picked up three, but now it's decision time. They have Antonio Rubio. He's an outstanding field goal kicker. If he tried it from here, it would be a 51-yard field goal attempt. I don't think they're going to kick it. I think they'll go for it. They are leaving the offense on the field. And they go no huddle, hoping that maybe George Ranch won't be ready. Here's the snap. 
And a throw to the sideline, complete to Van Wick for a first down at the 27. He's blasted right after the catch by Wyatt Jones, but not before he picked up the needed yardage for a first down. That moves the sticks, it's a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. Want to thank my producer, Les Clary, listening in, making sure we sound good for you. First and 10 for Travis from the 27-yard line. And Joku throws late over the middle looking for system, system, and again, the ball sailed over his receiver's head. It's probably just as well. Garrison backers with stride for stride with him on that deep slant pattern. Second down and 10. George Ranch joined District 26A when the UIL realigned in time for the 2020-2021 school year, and they were one of the playoff teams. On second down and 10, Njoku drops straight back, steps up, and looking down the field, throws late near the sideline, pass tipped, and it flies out of bounds, and that's a good thing for the Travis Tigers. I believe that was Connor Tallis who came in, kind of jumped the out route on a pass intended for Van Wick. And it's third down and 10. So if Travis throws, let's say they throw incomplete on this particular down, and they wanted to try a field goal, it would be a 44-yarder. And Antonio Rubio is certainly capable of that. Now they go empty backfield, three receivers right, two to the left. George Ranch, blitz look. Here they come, he gets rid of it quickly. Van Wick got it inside the 10, and he scores! Beautiful read by Anthony Njoku. Hot route, hot route, got it to Van Wick, and he took it in from 27 yards away. Woo! Touchdown pass number six on the year for Anthony Njoku and Gabriel Van Wick, that is his Second touchdown, six to nothing, and Drew Sissom to hold. Sam Kinnick is the snapper, and Antonio Rubio's kick is a thing of beauty, a rainbow over the goalposts. Hope we won't see any rainbows because, well, you know what has to happen for us to get a rainbow. This is VibeFortBend.com, 5.46 to go in quarter number one. Seven, nothing, we'll be back. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. 7 to nothing. Travis gets on the board first on the pass from Njoku to Van Wick. Tonight's hometown character, because he's not a coach or a player, is our side judge on the officiating crew, Bill Condi. Go to Bradley Stavenau at the Needville Insurance Agency for a, a team of hometown trusted agents who can make insurance easy for you and save money. Enjoyed visiting with Mr. Condi prior to the game. This kickoff will be returned from two yards deep in the end zone and up the right hash mark. Good return for George Ranch. They'll start in at the 34 yard line after that return by the young running back Jaden Shelton. So anyway, Bill Condi, side judge on the officiating crew, is a hometown guy, went to Clements, then went to Sam Houston State. And here he is on the crew of referee Eric Dematre. You know, Xfinity is the future of awesome, and we think Jaden Shelton of George Ranch has an awesome future. That was a 36-yard kickoff return to the 34. Cole Murphy hands it off straight up the middle. Hyman Drinkard hit hard after a two-yard pickup, and the guy who got to him first was Praise DeSolu. You know, Praise is wearing number 96. He's actually wearing number 23, and he was 
Supposed to be wearing 96 last week. I guess 23 is one-third of 96. No, it isn't. Never mind. Cole Murphy, far sideline, throwing deep. And the pass is caught, but out of bounds. It's a fabulous catch by Joseph Wilson. He was guarded closely by the opposite number one, Dominic Njoku. So, Joseph, man, that was great. If it was Canadian football, you'd been on plays of the week. But as it is, it's incomplete, leaving George Ranch with a third down and eight. Cole Murphy looks left, looks right. Spread formation on third and eight. Three-man front for Travis. Murphy drops back, has plenty of time, throws late, gets a completion across the 50 and down to the 46-yard line. Delivers a strike to Caleb Kaiser. Now they have Kyle Kaiser, but that's Caleb Kaiser. And now quickly they get the play launched on first and 10 from the 46 of Travis, and it's a short running play. And they give it to Jaden Shelton. And he did get two yards before the Travis defensive line pushed him back. Seven to nothing, Tigers on top. 4.19 to go in quarter number one. Pistol formation. Murphy hands it off to Drinkard running right. Hit hard, and that's going to be a gain of just one because of the strength of Drinkard. But Reed, or Parker Reed came on and just lit him up. Best you can light up Hyman Drinkard. I mean, he's it's like he's made of steel or something. So you think you're going to blow him up, but... Uh, he is very, very tough to bring down. But give him, give him a two yard pickup and it's third down and six for George Ranch and they need to reach the Travis 36 to get a first down. The backers may come from the outside. It's a little swing pass over here to Drinkard. He's got room, 40 yard line, 30 near sideline and run out of bounds. He might have been hit late. If it had been on the George Ranch side, I'm sure the George Ranch fans would have been complaining that Dominic and Joku hit him after he was beyond the boundary, but no flag, and they spot it. Where is that football? Is at the 23 with a first down. That's a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. Drinkard stretch play running right. Looked like he was going to have a lot of daylight, but they limit him to a gain of three because of the guy who was streaking in, Israel Akinlabi. Travis has some very quick defenders. By the way, if you're wondering, their game against Ridge Point is in week 11, the very last week of the season. And there's another interception, a little swing pass over to the right. And clearly Cole Murphy did not see Thomason Olerun Femi. The sophomore gets a pick, two picks already in this first quarter. The first one was tipped, and you can't really blame Cole Murphy for that one. But on that particular one, I guess he didn't expect Olerun Femi to drop into the pass route area. I think maybe he was expecting him to blitz off the defensive left edge. But the ball is at the 15-yard line. And we'll see what Travis does. 2.50 to go in quarter number one. Already leading 7 to nothing. Here's the whistle from referee Eric Dematre. And Njoku ready for the snap. Takes it. Gives it to Singletary. Has to make a couple of sideways moves before he heads up field. And he stopped for no gain. Matthew Lambert of George Ranch filling the hole. Now Travis taking its time between plays. Extra blocking back in there along with Njoku and they give it to Singletary again, keeping it on the ground. And he's fighting forward. I don't think he got more than a yard if he got that much. And credit that tackle to Judson Mixon. 
No relation to Judd Mixon, formerly played for Oklahoma, now plays for Cincinnati. Third down and nine, and Travis has run it on the first two downs deep in their own end. Will they get a little wild with it? And Joku drops back. He has time, swings it in the flat, too high, incomplete. Trying to get it to Robert Sims. And the George Ranch defense takes care of business getting the three and out. And the Southwest, or I should say the Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Tra uh, Trace takes care of business for us every single day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Fourth down and nine and Antonio Rubio standing at his two yard line. Ready to punt it away and look out, George Ranch might find a creative way to come after him and try to get a punt block. It's a perfect snap, chest high, and a beauty by Rubio. And it sends Joseph Wilson way back to his own 43, but he heads upfield. The number's on the far side, gets across the 50 to the 46 yard line, and that's where George Ranch will start. Tomorrow, we'll have a doubleheader on VibeFortBend.com. Hope you'll be with us. 10.45 a.m. countdown to kickoff show prior to Marshall against Sharpstown. And then the nightcap countdown to kickoff show at 5.45, 6, a, uh, 6 p.m. kickoff for Hightower and Angleton. Should be a good one. Draw play, Drinkard hit in the backfield, making a couple of moves, fights toward the line of scrimmage, and just gets back to that point. That's it. Travis with a very good sound running defense thus far. On the tackle there, Josh Shimon. We're in the final minute of the first quarter. George Ranch trailing seven to nothing, but they have a second down and 10 at the Travis 45. Cole Murphy calls for the snap. Hands it to Drinkert, hit deep in the backfield. A huge tackle for loss. And we gotta praise him like we should. Praise to Salu. He came through unblocked or he either came through unblocked or he shed his blocker very quickly for a five yard loss. And Drinkert is a tough running back and I think the way to stop him if you possibly can is do what Travis has done the last couple of series. Just get him before he can get going. On third and 15, Murphy drops back. Good protection. Now he's flush to the right near the sideline. Throws it late and hit. It was Praise who got him. DeSalu running him down from behind right before the boundary. He throws incomplete. And a very impressive series by the Travis Tigers. They force the punt on fourth and 15. And they'll send the freshman... Carmelo Ratliff back to return the punt. This is the first punt that we have seen from Tim Fisher, who averages 31.25. The first two George Ranch possessions ended in interceptions. 4.6 to go in quarter number one. This will probably be the last play. High snap, it is over Fisher's head. He's chasing it back to about the 20 where he is snowed under. And Travis will have a short field when we start the third quarter. We'll be back, seven nothing Travis, and they'll have the ball going right to left when we return. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. First Star and Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, 
and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. So George Ranch has had two interceptions, and I guess technically they just turned it over on downs as the punt snap went over Tim Fisher's head and deep into George Ranch territory, and they spotted it at the 22. It looked to me like Travis had recovered it at the 20, but I don't think two extra yards is going to bother them that much. They seem to have the offense in rhythm at the moment. Carmelo Ratliff along with Singletary in the backfield on either side of Anthony and Joku. Give to Singletary, pops through the middle. Good point of attack blocking, but the linebackers close the hole quickly. Connor Tallis makes that tackle for these George Ranch Longhorns. Ball on the left hash mark after a two yard pickup, second down and eight. And Joku running to the right. They had a very heavy to the right formation. He hurdles a man and gets inside the 15. They'll mark him at the 14 yard line and it'll set up a third down and three to go. Very unusual formation. They had what you'd call an open side with no tight end and no wide receiver. Nothing on the left side, just the left tackle. And Njoku sprinted, but the George Ranch defense reacted pretty well. <laughs> Just a five-yard pickup, and now here we go on third down. Njoku looks right, sideline, looking to get the ball in a tight window, and it's incomplete, very well covered over there. Van Wick was not the least bit open, and I think we're going to see an Antonio Rubio field goal try. So they will put it down at the 22 yard line. So it'll be a 32 yard field goal attempt from the right hash mark. Drew system to hold. Sam Kinnick will snap it. Travis trying to build on the seven nothing lead. Antonio nods his head. Good snap and hold, gets it away. Plenty of distance over the top of the uprights and right through for a field goal that makes it 10 nothing Travis. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp, or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464, just north of Austin High School. Can't sign in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. Yeah! Rubio's kickoff taken by Drinkard at the 11. He dropped the ball for a moment. And that hesitation limited his kickoff return. He got it back near the 20-yard line before he was pushed back. And I think uh, you got some players uh, talking talking a little mess there in the scrum. Good tackle by Temi Osinaiki of your Travis Tigers hustling down on special teams. It'll be first and 10. They mark Drinkard at the 23-yard line. That's where he got before the Travis special teams coverage unit pushed him back. Cole Murphy steps back up there at quarterback. 6'1", 170 pound senior and there's a, a flag before the snap. Not sure exactly what happened there. 
In this case, pre-snap might go against Travis, and I believe their nose guard reached across and pushed the center before it was time to snap the football. So that is encroachment or offside or whatever you would want to call it, and it'll make it first down and five for George Ranch from their 28. Murphy claps his hands together, can't get Travis to jump this time. You know, fool me once, shame on you, and Travis is not going to be fooled again, we hope. First down and five, running to the left. There goes the sophomore, twisting, turning, and getting what he can. About a three-yard pickup for Jaden Shelton. In fact, uh, give him four, and it's going to be second down and one yard to go. And on second and one, sometimes a coaching philosophy, I don't know if it's head coach Nick Cavallo's, Cavallo's philosophy, but sometimes when it is second and very short, they think, you know, let's run a little play action pass, waste one deep. If it hit, hits, if it works, that's great. If not, you got third and one. But they keep it on the ground and there goes Drinkard up the middle, got the first down at the 36. Pick up of four. That'll move the sticks, it's a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. George Ranch won its district opener at home over the Elkins Knights. Elkins still really struggling. We had their game last night against Bush. And they fell to 0 and 5. Drinkard blasted in the backfield. It was a two man effort. The first guy that got there, Parker Reed, he got him off course. And then it was Praise De Saulu. And that's a loss of two yards. Second down and 12 for George Ranch from their 34. Travis does not have a particularly big defensive line, but boy, they are quick. And they've been getting through the gaps early and often here. Timeout, George Ranch, 9.14 to go before halftime. We'll be back, 10 to nothing, Tigers on top. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot, Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot, Office Max. Taking care of business. Coming up at halftime, we'll have an exclusive interview with Bill Moore, who is the chapter president of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And I think you're gonna wanna hear about this because you know there's so many worthwhile crucial things that people need to be doing in groups and and fellowship and so forth and that includes in-person school and we'll talk with Bill about what Fellowship of Christian Athletes has done to keep things going during all these interruptions there's a quick pass by Cole Murphy and it's a pass that gains about eight yards and we've got a little fight back near where the passing pocket was. You got a George Ranch player whose helmet came off, one of the offensive linemen. And Jaden Young, one of the captains, very, very upset at something that happened, I believe, after the ball came out of Cole Murphy's hand. So we'll have to adjudicate this particular penalty before we know what the down and distance is. And if the play stands, then George Ranch would have a third down and three, but I don't think the play is going to stand. If this is a dead ball foul against Travis, of course it will be more than what's needed for a first down. It would be an, an automatic first down anyway. And now, referee Eric Dematre is coming over to the near side and he's talking to Trey Sissom. I'm sure Sissom wants an explanation. And I can't tell you what happened between uh, Jaden Young and whoever he was upset with. But here is uh, the referee's call if his mic works. Uh, 
Okay, well, that was huge. Both teams had a player called for unsportsmanlike conduct and two ejections. I know it is Jaden Young for George Ranch. I'm not sure who got thrown out for the Travis Tigers. I'll try and figure it out for you. Third down and three, so offsetting dead ball foul penalties after the play, so it didn't affect the game. Third down and three for George Ranch. This could be a big play, and there goes Shelton over the left side. Slant play gets four when he needed three. Good play. That'll move the sticks first down for George Ranch. In addition to visiting with Bill Moore of Fellowship of Christian Athletes at halftime, we will also have as many scores as we can give you. Two receivers to the right for Murphy, one over on the left. First and 10 from the 47 yard line. Can they protect him? Drinker goes in motion, they swing it back to him. And he has to stiff arm a man, cannot get out of the backfield, drop for a three yard loss. And I'm afraid there's gonna be a penalty against Travis though. I don't know that it's deserved. Nefemi Rufai grabbed him and pulled him down and I think they might call a horse collar tackle. Yep, that's what we're gonna get. You know, sometimes when you grab Jersey and pull a guy down, even if you don't put your fingers inside the back of his shoulder pads, which is what a horse collar tackle is, sometimes if the landing is particularly blunt force trauma, you know, violent, then they'll just throw the flag. And I think that Coach Sissom is saying that's what happened here. But it doesn't matter what he says. Well, you know, his, his opinion means a lot to me, but not to the officials, at least not right now. We're at eight minutes to go in the first half. Ten to nothing, George Ranch trailing, but thanks to the penalty, they have a first and ten at the 38-yard line of Travis. Murphy drops back, steps up, pocket collapsing, throws late over the middle, got a man, caught, and it's a touchdown. George Ranch, Kyle Kaiser. The 6'3 senior goes up, high points the football, and makes the catch. That's his third touchdown catch of the year. And a quick strike after that penalty. Brand new ball game. All right, now it's time to kick the extra point. Kick is up and good. Sorry I didn't get an ID on him before he kicked it. It's Edwin Avalos. We have a new score. It is Travis 10 and George Ranch 7. We'll be back on BiteFortBend.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, housing assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. All right, here's the kickoff. Edwin Avalos to boot it away. Left footer gets it in the air. And it is Ratliff who calls a fair catch and it bounces off of his hands out of bounds at the six yard line. If you call a fair catch but don't make the catch, you don't get that privilege of the ball being automatically moved up to the 25. 
Sorry, working on the audio problems. I'm always smarter than this device. Well, most of the time I am. Okay. There we go. Did a little surgical taping. Not surgical tape, but surgical in the way that I did it. Like a surgeon. Taping for the very first time. Okay. So that's a bad break for Travis. They had some kind of illegal block penalty in addition to the miscue by Ratliff. So that backs the ball up to the four yard line. So they've got to be careful here. Their lead has been cut to three points, 10 to seven, 7.40 to go before halftime. And we'll see what Anthony and Joku and company can do right here. Singletary, the lone setback. And they turn around and hand it to him. He gets back to the line of scrimmage and squirts through for an extra yard. It's a one yard gain. And there's some pushing and shoving and snarling and snapping. And we have an injured player for Travis. Uh, that player gets up slowly. It's Singletary. And he's going to limp off the field here. Replaced by Ricky Lang, sophomore running back. He got on the field and got a significant number of carries against Austin last week in a 68 to nothing win. And Joku started right, nobody went with him, and then he ran it up the middle and actually got a pretty productive play out of it. Advanced it to the eight yard line, that's a pickup of five. Correction, it's a pickup of four. Third down and six coming. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. we've got Sharpstown and Marshall. Game will probably be like a Tyson fight, so tune in early. And then in the nightcap, a really good game out of Class 5A Division I. Hightower against Angleton from right here at Hall Stadium. And Joku rolling to the right. He's in his end zone, throws short, got a completion, but a quick hit. And Robert Sims made the catch, but he was dropped immediately, stopped short of the first down. And I believe the guy that got him was Judson Mixon. No, I think I'm wrong about that. It's Jeffrey Ugo Chukwu. And it's fourth and less than a yard, but at their own 14, no way in the world, Travis is gonna go for it from there. Coming on late, Nefemi Rufai. And we've got a whistle. I think they... timeout Travis will take it with him. This is VipeFortBend.com. 5.29 to go in the half. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp, or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464, just north of Austin High School. Can't sign in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. Travis fans will have next Saturday night's game against Bush live on VipeFortBend.com. Make your plans. Rubio with a beautiful punt. It goes over the head of the punt returner, Joseph Wilson, and it rolls. Wow, that's a big one. All the way to the 26-yard line, and they down it right there. Let me do some math here. Let's see, 24 plus... 34, 44, 54. 
That's a 60-yard punt. So coming into the game, Antonio Rubio, his long punt was a 51-yarder, but he exceeded that right there. 60 yards with no return. I was a little bit surprised that Joseph Wilson let it go over his head. I think if he had chased it back, you know, he's agile enough where he would have had a chance to make some kind of return. 26-yard line, 5-14 to go before the half. Murphy hands it off on a delay up the middle. Drinkard not finding a lot of open field to run in. And he's brought down after a gain of less than one yard. Right up the middle, Travis playing tough defense. Prince Agwu. Correction, Kendrick Taylor made that tackle for the Tigers, who have picked off two passes. But George Ranch's defense has responded well after turnovers, and Travis uh, only has 10 points on the board and a timeout taken by George Ranch. We'll take it with him and be back. 10 to seven, 4.33 to go. George Ranch will have a second and nine when we come back. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. I'm sure Travis would love to have the football back if they could force a three and out here, but George Ranch has other ideas. Murphy drops back on second and nine, sets up the screen pass, and it's a completion and a gain of seven yards. That will leave them two yards shy of the first down as he delivered it over the oncoming pass rush to Andrew Syke. Third down and a long two coming for George Ranch as the clock now ticks down underneath. Well, it will be under the four minute mark before they snap it. On third and two, will they run, will they throw? Here goes Shelton running left, pops through, gets the first down across the 40 to the 43 yard line and signals first down. That's a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. George Ranch fans, they got a First Tire and Automotive right there at the entrance to Greatwood. So there you go. That's where you should take your car. Fourth play of the drive. Murphy, fake handoff, throws short. And it's a catch made, pulling it right off the top of the turf. Joseph Wilson dived to the ground as he made the catch. Six yard pickup. That advances it to the 49. George Ranch only has one timeout left in case you're wondering. They trail 10 to seven. Here as we get closer to halftime. Murphy with hand signals to his receivers. Steps back in a clean pocket. Throws deep over the middle and incomplete. A little bit underthrown. Tried to get it to Kyle Kaiser. And there were two guys back there for Travis. One of them was Matt Bennett and the other one was Ashton Oliphant. And they were a little bit on the fortunate side that that pass was underthrown, but still a good play to make sure it was not a catch. But what we've seen already is that Kyle Kaiser is more than capable of getting a step on the deepest DB for Travis. Third down and four coming up. Clock stopped after that incomplete pass with 2.54 to go. Murphy swings it out there to Drinkard. Makes a move on one man, can't escape the second one. He's one yard short of the first down. There's one Travis Tiger who was all stretched out after making the play. Parker Reed. It is less than one yard away from a first down. 
And when George Ranch gets into the short yardage situations, they don't necessarily bring out a bull elephant backfield. They just bring in Shelton to go along with Drinkard in the backfield. And they don't set up with Murphy under center. They're in the spread on fourth and one. Give to Shelton, running left, trying to turn it up. He gets the first down and tumbles out of bounds. That'll move the sticks. It's a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. The new line of scrimmage is the 45 after a pickup of three. And since the ball went out of bounds, the clock has stopped with two minutes to go. Murphy wants to pass. Throws deep, far sideline. Kaiser, jump ball, got it! Inside the 15 and down to the 12-yard line. That's a big catch by Kaiser. They mark him at the 13-yard line. And now George Ranch playing fast. Up the middle with Drinkard, then he cuts it outside and hammers his way down inside the 10 to the 9. Four-yard pickup makes it second down and six. Clock keeps ticking, and George Ranch would love nothing more than to score, get the lead going into the halftime break, and then not leave Travis any time on the clock. Murphy takes the snap. And a little toss sweep, there goes Drinkard, heading for the sideline, hits a guy at the five, keeps on going down to the three. And he goes out of bounds, which is helpful if George Ranch wants to have, you know, free reign to do whatever they want to in the playbook because if you don't have to spend that last time out, you don't have to worry about keeping the ball, you know, from... You know, the play ending inside the sidelines. You can let the clock either tick down or you can throw for the end zone, throw for the sideline. The world is your oyster. In this county that has lovely, well, in some places, lovely Oyster Creek. But there is George Ranch. They used that last time out, so... All that stuff I talked about with uh, the freedom of not, uh, well, never mind. I'm going to take a break. We'll be back. It's VibeFortBend.com. First Tire and Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Huge play coming up here. Third and less than one. The ball is just inside the Travis five-yard line. George Ranch about to snap the football on the 11th play of the drive. And they have Shelton and Drinkard behind Cole Murphy, who is now under center. And there's a whistle before the snap. This may bail Travis out and back George Ranch up, or it might be encroachment. And it might force George Ranch into a passing situation on what would be third and five and a half. They're walking back against George Ranch. It was premature movement before they got the football snapped. So now the ball is near the nine. It's not third and goal, it's third down and six, officially. New receiver into the game for George Ranch, Gregor Jones, known as the Overlander. Probably, I, I really don't know that he is. And actually, Gregor exits the field. And there's gonna be another penalty against George Ranch. It's a substitution infraction and it backs him up to the 14. And now it's third and 10. 
And this Travis secondary that has already picked off two passes tonight might be thinking, hey, you know, let's, let's frustrate them one more time. Murphy looks right, now left, calls for the snap, drops back, rolls to his right, looking end zone, throws late, and he's got a catch, and a, no, wait a minute, it's incomplete. Not completing the catch is Joseph Wilson. He hit the ground and the ball came out. Holy Des Bryant, it's incomplete. With 56.7 seconds. And it looks like it's going to be a field goal attempt. Edwin Avalos, who has not kicked any field goals yet this year, will try to tie the game up. A 31-yard attempt from the left hash mark. The hold is down and the kick is no good. He missed it to the left. And Travis maintains the lead. Wow, so George Ranch ran 11 plays and then kicked a field goal, or attempted one anyway. And there you go, that's, that's pretty unfulfilling for the George Ranch Longhorn faithful. And the Travis Tigers have it at the 20 yard line. And I wonder if they'll try to get something done. They've got 50.8 seconds to go. I guess I'm a math teacher. I should say it properly. Math vocabulary is important. 50 and 8 tenths seconds to go. And Njoku drops back, stands strong, throws far sideline, and the pass is batted away. Nice, nice play out there. Connor Tallis knocked the ball away from Robert Sims. And it's incomplete, second down and 10 with 45.7 seconds to go. Singletary, after kind of wobbling off the field on that prior possession, is back in the game. Looks like he's gonna be okay. Jamison Singletary. And Joku takes the snap, throws to the far sideline again. Sorry, again trying to connect with Sims. But for whatever reason, the ball kind of fell way short. And Travis has simply thrown a couple of incomplete passes. 41.4 seconds to go in the half. And I'm kind of wondering, are they going to just keep it on the ground right here? Maybe thinking, you know, if you throw incomplete on third and ten, then you have to punt it away and you give George Ranch a chance. They're going to run it. And Joku running left near sideline. Gets near the 30, but he comes up one yard short of the first down. You got to have good open field tackling. And Judson Mixon made a nice play. The senior linebacker. And now the clock will tick down, and George Ranch can't stop it. And Travis probably is not going to be inclined to punt it away. I think we've seen the final snap of the first half. Indeed, we have. The Tigers are running toward the locker room. It is 10 to 7. Tigers over Longhorns on BikeFortBend.com. BikeFortBend.com broadcasts of Fort Bend County High School Sports are brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome. By First Tire and Automotive, make sure your vehicles are in shape for the fall. First Tire and Automotive has four great locations, including First Colony, Katie Cinco Ranch, Eldridge Road in Sugarland, and Great Wood. Hey, George Ranch fans. That's where you should take your car. First Tire and Automotive is open Monday through Saturday. For the best prices on tires, go to firsttireandauto.com. By Nick's Italian Restaurant on FM 1464 in Sugarland, just a few hundred feet north of Austin High School at Nick's Italian Restaurant. Their family gets bigger every time you stop by. Travis, folks, you're very, very close to that restaurant, so you ought to go there by Archer Volkswagen on the southbound side of Highway 59 just inside the Sam Houston Tollway. Open since 1956 and ready to serve you. You'll feel like family at Archer Volkswagen. By the Needville Insurance Agency. Bradley Stavenaw and his team are your hometown trusted agents. Yeah, flow's funny. The gecko's cute and all, but they won't have the best rate for you. Don't look in your mailbox for the best rate. 
go to Needville Insurance Agency. You can either call Bradley Stavenaw at 979-793-7411 or you can visit NeedvilleInsurance.com. You got all those teenage drivers in your family and you got preteens who are going to be driving in a few years. You got to get cheaper insurance. Go to the Needville Insurance Agency and also Office Depot in Sugarland, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace, taking care of business every day. So VipeFortBend.com can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. We'll take a break and be back with Bill Moore of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes when we continue on VipeFortBend.com. It is 10 to 7. Travis over George Ranch at the half. Interested in Vipe Campus? Vipe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vipe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food, you can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464 just north of Austin High School. Can't sign in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. First Iron Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Iron Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com. You're listening to BikeFortBend.com. It's halftime. Glad you're with us. And our score is Travis 10 and George Ranch 7. And it is great to be joined this on this august occasion at halftime by Bill Moore of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. It's good to see you, my friend. How are you? Roger, doing great. I appreciate the opportunity of being here and I appreciate all what y'all do. Good to see you. The thing about Fellowship of Christian Athletes, I'm very familiar with it. And a lot of people are too, but we know that maybe some people are not. So we, I don't want to assume things. So what is Fellowship of Christian Athletes and what does it look like on the high school campuses? Roger, FCA is a, a national sports ministry. Actually, we're worldwide. We have presence in over 100 countries now. Our headquarters are in Kansas City. FCA was founded in 1954 and we're the largest sports ministry in the world. And our main method of ministry is, is to and through the coach. As you're well aware of, a coach has influence on the school campus. And so we minister to and through the coach, impact them, and they in turn impact the student athletes. Also, FCA, we have huddles on the local campuses at the junior high, high school, and college campuses we call them huddles using some athletic terminology. So instead of a club, it's an FCA huddle. The FCA huddles are student led and legally that's what gives us the right to meet on the public school campuses because it's a student led organization. The coach or the sponsor who, uh, who facilitates that is, is actually, that's what it is, is a facilitator. He keeps the kids in bound, but we have tons of resources uh, available for the FCA huddle meetings. And normally the huddles meet once a week or at least every other week at the junior high and high school levels. I know that there's something you want students and their families to know, and that is you don't have to be an active church member to be a part of Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, 
And now is when I'm going to go into the Wayback Machine. I hope people don't mind. The first thing I remember seeing as far as something published by Fellowship of Christian Athletes was this comic book about the life of Tom Landry, who was the Cowboys head coach for the first 29 years of the franchise. And he didn't have a relationship with God when he was in college and when he had started playing professional football. And not even back when he was in the cockpit of fighter planes during World War II. But someone, a teammate, invited him to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And in Tom Landry's very public life, he's very close with the well-known minister, uh, the late Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. And so that became Tom Landry's mission in life, other than winning football games, was to kind of share the message of the gospel. So any other... Um, folks like that that maybe late in life joined FCA. Tom Landry was a stalwart with FCA. As a matter of fact, he was on our National Board of Trustees for years, and I had the opportunity to meet him years ago. When I graduated from Baylor, I went on staff with FCA for two years in Dallas. And actually, he was chairman of the, of the leadership board in Dallas, and what a magnificent God-fearing man Tom Landry was. But you look at all the coaches throughout the years that have made impact in people's lives, like my coach at Baylor, Grant Taft, huge impact in my life. My high school coach, Ron Mills, made a huge impact in my life. And so you're right, the FCA is a gathering of students, and actually you don't even have to be an athlete to come to an FCA meeting. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes, as a staff person, my main focus is to minister to and through the coach and the athlete. But several people come to FCA, they're not even involved in sports, and we welcome that. We're talking with Bill Moore of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and he is the president, I guess, of the chapter that covers Fort Bend County in the southwest part of Houston. And is this something that you are compensated for doing, or is it just a labor of love? Well, no, this is actually a paid position. Uh, I do not treat working with FCA as a job. If I treated it as a job, my ministry would not be effective. This is a calling. I have a leadership board of men and women that we meet monthly, and so it's a faith-based ministry. So I have to raise my own support. And honestly, at times, you're scratching your head with the supports coming in, but God is faithful, and I've never missed a paycheck. And... Uh, and God it provides uh, the resources available for that, plus extra resources where we can get Bibles, devotional material out to the coaches and the athletes. I'm familiar with the kind of circumstances that you're dealing with. Athletic directors and coaches and athletes had to uh, kind of uh, change the play at the line of scrimmage, so to speak, just to get all those games played and those uh, championships decided last year. Hopefully this will be a normal year. We'll talk more about what a huddle has become, at least what we've had to make it, it, hopefully temporarily over the last few months when we've had this thing to deal with. So we'll be right back on VibeFortBend.com visiting with Bill Moore of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavano with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. We're back on vibefortbend.com. More halftime coming at you with Bill Moore, our guest. Fellowship of Christian Athletes, the, the trademark way of getting together 
and learning and studying and devoting some time to God is the huddle. And that's figurative and literal. But what, in what ways were you restricted when it came to having huddles going all the way back to March 20th and the way things were during the this previous school year, 2020-2021? Roger, COVID uh, put a dent in, into our ministry plans. So we had to adapt. In all reality, this past school year, I did not step foot on a school campus to an FCA huddle meeting. Wow, that makes it very hard for you to do what you need to yes. do. Because the huddle meetings didn't occur. Because you couldn't get into the campus and everything was restricted and locked down. But the good news is we found ways to minister. I've, I've talked and focused with the coaches who are the sponsors. Many of the huddle meetings were held via Zoom. I sat on, in on several Zoom FCA huddle meetings. And so that occurred. From our ministry impact, I was able to still get in to see coaches here in Fort Bend School District because the field houses are separate from the main school building. So I was able to get in at least to be able to minister to and through the coach. I went on a Bible campaign. I had a coach tell me one time before a football game, I asked him, what can I do to serve you? How can I pray for you? And he said, Bill, we need Bibles. And so, man, I went and talked to a couple, three uh, of our donors, and they underwrote, and we got about 400 Bibles distributed out to coaches and athletes because that's the truth. The kids were scared. In all honesty, these athletes come up, you know, they think they're all, all that, but they really had a fear of what was going on in society and also with this disease called COVID. And so we, we hit them with the truth, the truth of God. And so I was very blessed and fortunate. I had donors to underwrite the distribution of, of those Bibles to the coaches and the athletes. Well, I know with what we've witnessed over the last year and a half, basically, there are so many things um, that people really need to do for their own well-being. Um, people need to be together in groups and, and support each other. And I know that, sadly, something that we've seen is that people who were regular church attenders, now that churches are open, they had gotten pretty accustomed to kind of sitting at home, maybe watching church on TV or through a Zoom or something, mm -hmm. maybe they didn't, didn't really do anything to nourish themselves spiritually at all. So what are some of the things that you've seen and maybe some strategies that, that ministers can have at their churches to get people to come back if they've gotten too comfortable staying at home? Well, I think just letting them know the truth that, that uh, we have the victory through Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So God is our protector. And we saw that with FCA. You know, this past summer and the summer before, we had to cancel our big sports camp that we ha uh, have and hold every summer at Texas A&M. At this camp, we'll have around 1,200 coaches and athletes. Unfortunately, this, summer, this past summer and the summer before, they were canceled. But we reached out. I heard from coaches saying, Bill, we need to get together as coaches and as families. So we held a coaches family retreat in College Station at A&M uh, in early July. And we had about 40 coaches and their families were there. So we were able to pour into them, to reach them, to disciple them, to go out and make disciples. And so we, we, we're looking at different ways. And as you mentioned earlier, we want this coming school year, hopefully, to be a normal year that we can get in to see the coaches and athletes and attend the huddle meetings. But we emphasize that to the kids, coming to an FCA huddle does not mean you don't go to your church. We want to lead people to active involvement in their local Bible-believing church. Also, um, and... Uh this, this happens to me from time to time. I had this thought in my head, and the, the thought seems to have left me. Maybe it'll come back. But what, are, what is the way to get in touch with you and with other people involved in Fellowship of Christian Athletes if people want to know more and find out how they can be involved? And maybe while you're answering, I can think of my next point. <laughs> <laughs> I understand where you're coming from. The more I think about something, the thought eventually passes. But... To know more about FCA, go to our website, very simple, fca.org. 
FCA.org, and it is loaded with resources, historical information about FCA, huddle meeting tips. So FCA.org is a great resource to know and learn more about FCA. To contact me, I serve all, of, all the school districts in Fort Bend County, not only Fort Bend ISD, but every school district in Fort Bend County, plus several other districts. So I'm a pretty busy man. I have about 85 campuses uh, that to call on. And, and uh, so to reach me, the best way is via email, which is bmore at fca.org. Be more at fca.org is the best way to contact me. Right. Be the initial B, B. and then M O O R E because, Correct. you know, I, I think too hard about stuff and I might be thinking be more like <laughs> B E and then the word M O R E. That's but right. no, it's, it's your initial and your name. And um, thanks for all you do. And I did happen to think of what I was trying to think of before. When you mentioned your camp, mm -hmm. I was also thinking that. Back in late July, and in San Antonio at the Texas High School Coaches Association Convention, you had a wonderful breakfast. I think you said about 500 coaches getting together, and what a relief that is to finally be together again. Oh, absolutely, and just the relief on the coaches' faces. You could see it. They were gathering. As people, we need fellowship, and, and boy, it was a blessing to be there amongst all the coaches, other FCA staff. We had a great uh, message from Coach Trailer, who's the head football coach at UTSA, and he gave a, a very strong testimony. So it was just a welcoming relief, and it's a good way to, to kick off the football season uh, from having that FCA breakfast. All right, Bill Moore, thank you so much. Glad you're here doing what you do, making time for us at halftime. And also glad all these people in the stands are here and the players and the coaches and, and uh, at least that part of the world, something is right with the world. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, VibeFortBend.com. Halftime continues. Third quarter will start pretty soon when we return. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp, or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464 just north of Austin High School. Can't sign in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. First Tire and Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC, Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Okay, here is a real treat for you, Travis fans. They are introducing the homecoming court, and now you will hear part of those introductions, and then you will hear the announcement. Who is the king and who is the queen? I'll just step aside and stop talking. So the homecoming ceremonies for 2021 for Travis. Josh Shemin, football player. In his spare time, Josh likes to hunt and fish. After graduation, Josh plans on attending college and playing college baseball. Josh Shimmon.
Don't worry. There are more members of the court yet to be introduced, I think. Of course, that may be it. Actually, I think that is it. We'll get the big announcement soon. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, your 2021 Travis High School homecoming team is Liam Baje. Jay is the homecoming king, and we'll get the queen announcement here in just a moment. And now, your 2021 Travis High School homecoming queen is Nia Harris. Nia Harris, congratulations to her. She is running full of glee and giddiness up to the 50-yard line. She gets her sash and her crown from Principal Sarah LaBerge. A beautiful piece of Americana, a wonderful night. Thankfully, the weather has held off. It's been very pleasant. And we'll step aside one more time and come back and give you some scores before we get the second half underway. Travis leading George Ranch by a score of 10 to 7. This is by FortBend.com. We wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. And we wish the Tigers the best of luck in the second half. Go Tigers! You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Hey high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help! Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464 just north of Austin High School. Can't dine in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. Yeah! <laughs> Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. All right, something that I wanted to confirm and give you the correct information on. There was a play in the first half where... One player from George Ranch and one player from Travis were both ejected 
they had dead ball foul, unsportsmanlike conduct, and they tossed Jaden Young out of the game for George Ranch, and the player that they tossed out for Travis was Praise DeSaulu, who's played great on the defensive line, and you know, ever since they threw him out, the Travis has taken up the slack and continued to play very well. It is 10 to 7, Travis on top at the half, and now we want to give you some scores from around the area tonight. Big showdown in Katy, and the Katy Tigers, ranked number two in Class 6A, are whooping up on the number seven ranked Tompkins Falcons. I'm kind of surprised that this is so one sided, but it is Katy 56 and Tompkins 14 with 7.30 to go in the game. Katy 56 and Tompkins 14. No, it's not a mistake. That is the score with 7.30 left. And I don't have time to give you all of these, but I will tell you that the Foster Falcons are leading Terry. 3.13 to go in the second quarter, and the Rangers hanging in there pretty well. So Foster only up by four with 3.13 to go in the first half. You got the Friendswood Mustangs leading Baytown Sterling, 7-0 at the half. Shadow Creek and Dawson all tied up 17 all at the halftime break. The Willow Ridge Eagles leading Houston Austin, 7-6 with eight minutes left in quarter number two. C.E. King moving up in the rankings. They're ranked number 24 now in the state in Class 6A, and they beat Ridgepoint here in the 28-26 thriller about three weeks ago, and C.E. King is leading Summer Creek 28-10. The Pasadena Memorial Titans leading Goose Creek Memorial 20 to nothing at the halftime break. Pearland 35 to 14 over Alvin. That's a halftime score. North Shore leading Humble 35 to 6, and North Shore has taken a loss this year. They lost to Westfield. Westfield's a really good team. That was no fluke, but North Shore still highly regarded and ranked number 10, and they lead 35 to 6 over Humble at the half. Baytown, Lee, and Laporte tied at 7-all at halftime. Cy Fair leading Cy Creek 23-3 at the halftime break. Number six ranked Atascacita leading Kingwood 14-7. That's one of those rivalry games. Kingwood is not very good. Atascacita is awesome, but looks like thus far Kingwood is basically playing the Eagles off their talons. The Straight Jesuit Prep Crusaders, and that's for you, Robert Archer of Archer Volkswagen. Straight Jesuit leading Hastings out of A-Leaf, 21-7 at the halftime break. Memorial out of Spring Branch leading Spring Woods, 34-6 at the halftime break. Klein Collins leads Klein Oak, 14-3 at the half. Westfield, number nine in the state, taking on number 11, Spring. Oh, that is a great ball game or a great matchup. But Westfield is dominating thus far. It is 28 to 7. And I almost gave so many scores that I didn't catch the second half kickoff. It is Travis kicking off to George Ranch, which will defend the south end. Antonio Rubio striding toward the football and gets it in the air. And he hammered that one. It will land in the end zone. Touchback. And George Ranch, trailing 10 to 7, will start right there. New Caney leading Lufkin, 17 to 14 at the half. Barbers Hill 19, Crosby 14 with, they're just in the first minute with the second minute of the second quarter. And that's it as far as games that are still in action. George Bush, last night we had it for you. They beat Elkins 10 to three. So enough with scores and we'll concentrate on the game in front of us. Cole Murphy drops the ball as he tries to hand it off to Drinkard. And I believe Drinkard jumped on the football to save the day for the Longhorns. It's a two-yard loss on first down. So Travis got a 27-yard pass from Njoku to Van Wick to make it 7-0. A Rubio field goal made it 10-0. And then Kyle Kaiser caught a long touchdown pass for George Ranch. Second and 12, Murphy sets up the screen and Drinker drops it at the 18. He was kind of doing a pirouette in the air as he tried to make the catch. And he might have heard some footsteps as coming in 
was Anthony Oliver rip snorting. And by the way, Anthony Oliver, no relation to the amazing athlete Cameron Oliver, who graduated with the class of 2021. Cam O could play him some football and basketball. He could do everything. Third down and 12 for George Ranch. Murphy drops back. They protect him. Here comes a late rush. Over the middle ball. Tipped and incomplete. Murphy was lucky it wasn't a third interception. The ball went up in the air, and it was Israel Akinlabi who made one of those earlier interceptions, diving and nearly got his palms under it before it hit the earth, the field turf, so to speak. So the Travis defense takes care of business with a three and out, just like Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland takes care of business every single day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Roger Smith with you. It is 10 to 7, Travis leading, and it looks like they're about to get the football. Low snap, it bounces back to the punter who gets it away, and that's Tim Fisher doing the punting, and he gets a pretty decent roll. It goes all the way down to the 37-yard line of Travis, and the Tigers will take over there. First possession of the third quarter coming up for Travis. Be with us tomorrow. We'll have an 11 o'clock kickoff as Marshall takes on Sharpstown. The undefeated Marshall Buffs stampeding, we hope, toward a state championship game appearance. And maybe they can knock off Alito or, or whoever else is waiting there. Run up the middle, Singletary. And Joku handed it off to him. And he slanted off the left side and picked up three. But a very physical George Ranch defense is there waiting for him. Carson Mixon there, and Travis playing fast. Four-yard pickup on first down, second down and six, and Joku throws to the near sideline to a wide-open Carmelo. He's got it, makes a move near the 35 and carries it to the 34, the 33-yard line. It's the freshman, Carmelo Ratliff. George Ranch has to line up quickly. Travis is playing like their hair is on fire. First and 10 from the 28. Swing pass over here on the near side and a three yard pickup on that hitch screen to Robert Sims. For George Ranch, Kennard McGuire comes up to make the tackle. And I would like to say more, but we're about to snap it again on second down and six. And Joku drops back, looks over the middle. Moves over to his left. He's going to run. 25. Cuts between two tacklers. Dives and gets the first down by a yard. Gets to the 17. It's a pickup of eight and it moves the sticks. That's a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. George Ranch fans, go to the First Tire and Auto in Greatwood. Right near the entrance to the subdivision. From the 18 yard line, Travis playing quickly. Fake handoff and Joku steps up in the pocket, running away from trouble near the sideline and somehow gets it away and a great play by Anthony and Joku to avoid the sack. That was the sixth play of the drive, Travis Picking up the pace, and if George Ranch wants to do some defensive substitution, well, they're either going to have to call timeout or fake an injury. Second down and 10 after that incomplete pass. There goes Njoku up the middle, 10, 5, hit, and down at the 3. Whipsawed and brought down by Jeffrey Ugo Chukwu, but it's first and goal, Tigers. They've had the ball more than two minutes. Singletary is not going to get the carry. It's Njoku diving near the one, and he's belted. He will not get in, but it's going to be second and goal at the one. Garrison backers knocking him down. Right at the one-yard line, under center. There's Njoku pushing up the middle into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers! And they build the lead up to 16 to 7 with the extra point to come. And
and the very reliable Antonio Rubio comes on. Out of the hold of Drew Sissom, Sam Kinnick to snap it. Good snap and hold, ball in the air. And it flies all the way onto the track off the strong leg of Antonio Rubio. That is an Archer Volkswagen touchdown drive. It takes nine plays. It covers 63 yards. And it took two minutes and 33 seconds off the clock, tick, uh, capped off by a one-yard quarterback sneak by Anthony Njoku. And we'll be back on BikeFordMen.com with 8.30 to go in the third. Travis 17, George Ranch 7. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. George Ranch takes over at the 25-yard line after a fair catch on the kickoff. They trail by 10, 17-7, as it was an outstanding two-and-a-half-minute touchdown drive for Travis. Murphy hands it off to Drinkard, who's getting more rough treatment. Several Travis Tigers just ganging up on him. Josh Shimon, member of the homecoming court, was leading the charge. They do give Drinker a gain of one yard at second down and nine. And I think it's taken a little extra time to get the play call in for George Ranch on second down and nine. And Murphy's still looking over at the bench. The play clock is down to 10. Two running backs, Shelton and Drinker. Low snap, handoff to Drinker. Trying to get around the edge, and he does get some yards. He's got a first down across the 40, near midfield, and tumbles out of bounds in front of the George Ranch bench. That's a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. I'd like to say hello to my good friend Rick Grimm, the head baseball coach at Travis. Looking forward to the baseball season. Shelton in the backfield next to Murphy. First and 10 from the 48 and a whistle prior to the snap. Hold on. Somebody broke a rule. And a timeout is taken. I can't tell if it was taken by Travis or George Ranch, but I know I'm going to take one myself. We'll be back after this from Nick's Italian Restaurant. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food, you can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464 just north of Austin High School. Can't sign in, you can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. It was George Ranch who took the timeout, and they have the first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Murphy in the spread, sends a man in motion, 
And a little problem at getting the handoff into the hands of Shelton, and he's wrestled down after a one-yard loss. That was a kind of a disorganized play. Josh Shimon in on the tackle. And he was there along with, is that Sam Kinnick? I don't know. Okay, well it is no gain, second down and 10. Murphy drops back, stands strong, steps up, throws it deep down the middle, got a man, got a catch inside the 20, 15, 10, near pylon, and into the end zone. It is Joseph Wilson who strikes from 52 yards away. What a response by the George Ranch offense. As soon as they fell behind by 10 again, they cut the lead down to four, and if the extra point is good, it'll be a three-point game. You know, I said something a couple of minutes ago, and I'm gonna say it again, and you're going to think that I am saying it again because I've lost my mind or I'm suffering from some kind of cognitive problem. Hold on here, Edwin Avalos with the extra point attempt. The snap is high, but they put it down on the block and he drills it to make it 17 to 14. I'm gonna say, say hi to my good friend, Rick Grimm, the Travis head baseball coach. I don't think he had quite tuned in when I said it the first time, so I had to say it again. And he's sitting a few feet to my left. We'll take a break, 17, 14. 6.33 to go in quarter number three. This is VibeFortMen.com. First Star and Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Back at Hall Stadium where we've got a good football game. And I have to tell you, I've been longing for a game like this because we've had games that were 72 to nothing, 68 to nothing, 28 to nothing. It's just been ridiculous. Some of the blowouts that we've had to sit through. But this one looks like it could go all the way down to the wire. David Michel ready to kick off the left footer. Gets the official signal and puts it in the air. It's a high kickoff, but it will be returned. It is Ratliff from the four. Up between the hash marks, gets a couple of nice blocks, but goes down hard at the 28-yard line. He looked, uh, you know, kind of like when a, a toddler is running across the floor and uh, he just hits the floor before you, before you know it. It was kind of like that, but he bounced right back up because he's a tough kid. By the way, Nick's Italian Restaurant is one of those places where their family gets bigger every time you stop by. And we got family connections all over the place. Kyle Kaiser and Caleb Kaiser for George Ranch. They're your Nick's Italian Restaurant connection on the George Ranch side. There is Njoku, fakes a handoff, goes straight up the middle. Big gain, still up, and gets it down to the 40, or out to the 44 yard line. Wow, what a run. That's a 16-yard gain and a first down. Think of First Tire and Auto Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. And uh-oh, well, I think Njoku is down. That's the bad news, but the good news is I think it's just a cramp. They're just kind of getting one of his legs up in the air and stretching that muscle on the back of the leg. We'll take a break and be back. This is vipefortbend.com. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. 
Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Well, Anthony Njoku is up on his feet, and I think he's going to be okay. you got to get those electrolytes in him. So he's taking a big old swig out of the Gatorade squirt bottle and walking very slowly toward the sideline. And I am I'm not a doctor, don't even play one on TV, but I will tell you I'm pretty sure it's a cramp. And I can also tell you that Drew Sissom got some reps last week, and so... He is capable of holding down the fort for a play or two. And it is first down and 10 at the 44 yard line for Travis in their end of the field. We'll see if uh, dad calls a surprise play and maybe just has his boy Drew wing it down the field. George Ranch might not be expecting that, but they keep it on the ground. Singletary dropped in the back uh, backfield. Man, that was, that was, Matthew Lambert all over him before he could even get started, and it's a three-yard loss. I think the ball might have come out at the end, but I believe the play was over, and it is not a fumble because the ground cannot cause a fumble. Still Sissom in at quarterback. They don't have Njoku all stretched out. He is bending over, pulling his right foot up toward him. And there is another running play, and the ball came out. George Ranch says they have it, and they do. David Walker comes out of there. It was a handoff to Singletary. He headed right. He was hit in the backfield, and it is George Ranch football at the 39-yard line of the Travis Tigers. Oh, what a revolting development. So with the ball at the 39 yard line and 524 to go in quarter number three, George Ranch can take the lead if they get a touchdown out of this drive. Murphy ready, wipes his hands on the towel, fakes a handoff, throws short, now throws long, Drinker got it, 16 yard line and run down at the seven. The only reason he wasn't able to run into the end zone is well there's two reasons one the ball was underthrown and second Israel Akinlabi was hustling all the way he was the guy that kind of bit on that up and out type fake you have the quarterback fake a pass toward the sideline and then throw deep so it is first down and goal at the seven yard line Murphy with Drinkard on his left Changing the play, perhaps. Play clock down to five. Takes the snap, gives to Drinkard, running right, trying to make some space, gets to the edge, cuts it up, and it's a touchdown. George Ranch, the Longhorns, have taken the lead, 20 to 14. Well, that is an Archer Volkswagen touchdown scoring drive. It goes 39 yards, four plays, and it took less than one minute off the clock. It took 47 seconds, and Hyman Drinker from the seven yard line ran it in. Extra point kick attempt by Edwin Avalos, up and good. And George Ranch threatening to spoil the Travis tri, uh, Travis Tigers homecoming. It is 21 to 17, 44 37 to go in the third. We'll be back on VipeFortBend.com. First Iron Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, 
and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. All right, folks, let's see how the Tigers respond trailing for the first time, 21-17. Here's a high kickoff and it's Ratliff from the four yard line back to the middle looks like last time and he gets across the 25 and breaks out near the 30. The freshman Carmelo Ratliff a little slow getting up after that tackle. Looks like maybe he tweaked an ankle or second or something. Thirty-yard line, first and ten for Travis. Four twenty-seven to go in quarter number three. And Joku back out there at quarterback for the Tigers. Single Terry up the middle. Tough running gets four yards. And the guy who recovered the fumble that led to that. George Ranch scoring drive. David Walker made the tackle there. Second down and six for Travis. Joku claps his hands together. Another handoff to Singletary, but he cannot get out of the backfield. Who grabbed his foot? They say the ball came out at the end. I'm, I'm not sure. I think maybe it was Matthew Lambert who broke through and he was just hitting him face to face right when Njoku put the ball in his belly. It's a two yard loss and it'll be third and eight. George Ranch defense must have figured something out and they've made a crucial halftime adjustment. Third down and eight, empty backfield. Njoku, three receivers to the right. Look to the right, here comes the rush. He gets out of there somehow, running hard, near sideline, gets to the 40, keeps going, 45 and across the 45 to the 47. What a brilliant first down run. 12 yards on the game for Anthony and Joku, and that's a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. After they reset the chains with a first and 10 at the Travis 48. The clock begins running again. We're under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Njoku throws it quickly. A little hit screen, and it's a short gain. Three yards as he delivered it to Robert Sims. George Ranch responding very quickly. Steven Odusola Steven. His first name is Steven, and one of his last names is Steven. Second down and seven for Travis. We could have one heck of a fourth quarter. And Joku hands it off to Singletary up the middle. There, some running room inside the 40 to the 36 yard line. 12 yard run and a first down for the Tigers. Thirty-seven yard line and Joku running it, keeping it himself, going to the right, gets outside the numbers, near side, 30, 25, 20, one man to beat, and out of bounds. Garrison Backers ran him out of bounds, and Anthony's teammate Gabriel Van Wick was doing everything he could to try and keep that defensive back away from him. The clock has gone down to 144 to go in quarter number three, and Travis really on the march. And there is a timeout taken. 
George Ranch takes it. We'll take it with him. Fightfortbend.com. We'll be back. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp, or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464 just north of Austin High School. Can't dine in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. Travis is about to come back out onto the field with 144 to go in the third, and they're down by four, but they are marching. First and 10 at the 13-yard line of George Ranch. Anthony Njoku had that cramp situation on the previous possession. He's back out there now and looks like he's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Ratliff in motion. Give a keeper up the middle and nothing doing. In fact, it's going to be... A loss of a yard as Njoku ran into Jacques Franklin. So it's second down and 11, loss of one. I want to say hi to my brother-in-law, James Green. And he wanted me to give some love to Stephen F. Austin and Sam Houston State playing the Battle of the Piney Woods tomorrow. Second down and 11, Njoku play fake. Dropping back, gets away from the pressure, throws in zone, look, it's a touchdown! Van Wick, second touchdown catch of the night for Gabriel Van Wick. And with 1.04 to go in quarter number three, Travis gets the lead back. Beautiful diving catch. And now they run that swing and gate formation. Will they kick it or will they do something exotic? Travis players looking over at the sideline. Play clock is at 11. And Drew Sissom is going to snap it sideways to Njoku. Going to throw to the right. Van Wick caught it. No, it's knocked out. Incomplete. The two-point try is no good because of an awesome play by Kennard McGuire. Xfinity is the future of awesome. And the George Ranch coaches think that not only does Jaden Shelton have an awesome future, but also Kennard McGuire, and he prevented the two-point play, and it is 23 to 21, Travis on top, so you get that two-point margin, sometimes it can make a huge difference in the strategy if a field goal can win it down the stretch. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464 just north of Austin High School. Can't dine in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. Rubio to kick off from the left hash mark. It goes bang, zoom, but not to the moon. It's going to be a return from the three-yard line. It's Drinker, and a flag comes in as he tumbles past the 25-yard line. Correction, not Drinker. Sorry about that. It's Jeffrey Ugochukwu. Usually a flag on a kickoff return means it's against the return unit. We're under a minute to go in quarter number three. Travis has just taken the lead 23 to 21. But it's a two point lead because out of the swing and gate formation, they try to pass a little fade route in the right corner. And it was Kennard McGuire who made the big play for George Ranch. This is gonna be a spot foul on an illegal block in the back. And it will take the ball all the way back to the 10 yard line. 
That's a devastating penalty against George Ranch. You got to be very careful with the football there. But what an opportunity for a 90 yard touchdown drive. Murphy out of the spread, hands it off to Drinkard, looking for running room, picks up four. He's bent over backwards and thrown back. Israel Akinlabi in on the tackle, also had some help from Parker Reed. Second down and seven. We're in the final minute of quarter number three. Two setbacks now, Shelton and Drinker. Murphy might be changing the play. Game clock is down to 17 seconds in the third. There goes Drinker running parallel in the line of scrimmage, and he ends up getting buried for a loss of six. That was just not blocked. And he couldn't, it was so crowded, he couldn't even maybe take a quick right turn away from the line of scrimmage to try and run around the pursuit. Well, that is how the third quarter ends. Travis leads it 23 to 21. We got a good one going here on bikefortbend.com. The second of our four games that we'll bring you this weekend. Roger Smith with you. Come on back for quarter number four, 23, 21 Tigers. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. I didn't get a chance to say as much as I wanted to about the Battle of the Piney Woods, Stephen F. Austin and Sam Houston State. Sam Houston State, the defending national champions in their classification. But I also wanted to give a shout out to my niece, Lindsay Beth Green, James's daughter, one of two Travis kids who graduated out of the Green household. My sister-in-law, Stacy, and my nephew, Jack Green, class of 2020. Cole Murphy dropping back, throwing, and the pass is caught at the 25. He drilled it. Got it in there to Gregor Jones. First catch for Gregor the Overlander. It moves the sticks. That's a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. First and 10 for George Ranch, trailing 23-21. They've got the ball at the 25-yard line. This is the fourth play of the drive. And they give it to Shelton, running hard over right guard, getting about two, maybe three. George Ranch offensive line kind of moving around out there like they feel like they are starting to, I don't know, show a physical edge over the Travis defensive line. We'll see how it works out. Second down and seven. There's a handoff. Drinkard bounces outside. Look out. 40 and an ankle tackle that saves the day. He ends up getting a first down. I want to make sure I give credit where it's due. It's Aaron Mendiola that just kind of got him on his instep and tripped him up and I don't think he would have been stopped if Mendiola hadn't made that play. It's a first down at the 42 yard line. This will be the sixth play of the drive for George Ranch. This drive started in the final minute of the third quarter and they've advanced it to their own 42 from deep in their own end. Play fake. Throw to the sideline, got a catch. Six yard gain to Gregor. He does it again, Gregor Jones. Six yard gain and it's second down and four. Mm -hmm. 
This is a critical game if you want to get that preferred seating. C-C-S-E-E-D-I-N-G. There goes Drinkard around the left side. And his feet kind of slip around, uh, slip out from under him as he gets past the numbers. And he comes down one yard shy of the first down. It'll be third and one. They now have it in Travis territory, do the Longhorns, at the 49. And I'm sure that if they get stoned for no gain here, that they would go for it on fourth down. Free play. Travis jumped. Sideline pass is incomplete. Too tall for Gregor Jones. But now I'm looking around. Yeah, I do see a flag, and I'm pretty sure that Travis jumped offside. It is offside. All right, well, the, the official's microphone just, it seems like it hasn't been working at all, no matter which game we're broadcasting for you. Hopefully that'll change soon. We always like to hear the referee's ex explanation of what happened. So it is first down now at the Travis 44 yard line, that last play did not count. Murphy fakes the handoff, drops back, deep over the middle, catch! Inside the 30, down at the 25 yard line. Joseph Wilson sat down in the, the soft underbelly between zones, and it is a first down catch. Aaron Mendiola made the tackle, but not before another first down for the Longhorns. And it's not a brutally warm night or anything, but it is humid, and so defenses can get tired under these humid conditions. Ball at the 25, first and 10. Murphy wants to pass again. Throws to the deep right corner. End zone. It is caught for a touchdown. 25 yards. And he gets it to Caleb Kaiser. There's your Nick's Italian Restaurant family connection there. Family gets bigger every time you stop by. Go see them. FM 1464 in Sugar Land, just a few hundred feet north of the Austin High School campus. George Ranch on top again. It's 27-23. So they've got the four-point lead and really would not make sense for them to go for two. So that's just what they're doing. Okay. Drinkard hands it off. And now it's a throwback to Murphy for the two-pointer that works. I guess they had the play ready. They had it in the bag and they weren't gonna leave it in the bag. Two-point play. They hand it off to Drinkard, running right. Gave it to Joseph Wilson. And I think we saw that from Philadelphia in that Super Bowl they won over the Patriots a few years ago. George Ranch back on top. It is 29 to 23. Kickoff coming right after this. Hello, fans. This is Bradley Stavenaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Well, folks, that was an Archer Volkswagen touchdown scoring drive, and it covered 90 yards. The George Ranch Longhorns on eight plays. Ate up four minutes and nine seconds and drove it those 90 yards and they end up getting the touchdown pass to Kyle Kaiser, or Caleb Kaiser rather. So they lead it 29 to 23 after the successful two point conversion and now here comes the kickoff with David Michel. It's a low line drive and it's Ratliff from the six. Bringing it up the field, going between the hash marks and the numbers, and out to the 30-yard line, and instead of Ratliff, I misidentified him. It 
was Dominic Njoku. So it is Travis Tiger football at the 33. Eight thirty-eight to go in the game. Just so you know, Travis still has all three of its timeouts. Three receivers on the right side of the formation. And Joku fakes it, throws a quick slant, and got a nice gain and a first down. To Ratliff, it's a 10-yard pickup. George Ranch's Garrison Backers. You know, they are not giving the Tigers a first down. They're saying it's a little bit short. I'm kind of surprised they don't wave the sticks on down the field. Njoku might be trying the hard count to get George Ranch to jump in the interior line. Now they have moved the sticks. It is a first down. I thought it was a 10-yard gain, and I turned out to be right. Njoku throwing hit screen off of Ratliff's hands, and you might have been hearing footsteps as Trevion Akins was closing fast, and it was very difficult to concentrate on the football. And it bounced out of his hands. So goes the first play of this drive. Second play, rather. Three receivers in sort of in a bunch over there on the right side. And Joku fakes the handoff and throws another slant. It's complete again, but this time it's not for a 10-yard gain to Ratliff, it's for a five-yard gain because he was stoned by Garrison Backers. Last time, Backers chased him down. This time, Backers didn't exactly jump the route, but he just blasted him. Here we go. Third down and five. George Ranch jumped, could be a free play, and Joku down the far sideline. And it is incomplete, broken up. Nice play out there. Uh, I want to make sure I identify him right. I think it's Steven Odusola Steven. And I'm right. The pass was intended for Van Wick. And by the way, I think I was wrong. You know what? Hold on. There's a, a penalty. It is offside. So... Like I said, it was a free play. So Njoku just chunked it down the field. That's what we say in Texas, chunked, not chucked. He threw it deep, didn't get what he wanted, but that's okay, he knew he'd have the penalty. Njoku starts his run to the right, now comes back to the left, gets the first down, and out of bounds inside the 40. And Travis fans want a late hit. Matthew Lambert did bump Njoku and knocked him down beyond the boundary, but in the official's judgment, it just was not egregious enough to merit a flag. We're at 7.01 to go in this, this ball game, I guess I should say in regulation time. Travis trailing 29 to 23. First and 10 from the 47 yard line. Njoku drops back, steps up in the pocket, and his pass is batted down at the line. And I'm not sure who got it. My best guess is it was David Walker. So it's going to be second down and 10. Njoku was able to step over toward his offensive coordinator. Chris Lewis and get the play call, second down and 10. He drops back, and it's a screen pass, and it's caught, but diving to the ground to make the catch is Robert Sims, so it's just a gain of one, if that. And it's going to be third down and 10. So a good idea, but the play, the pass needed to be up around at least waist high and give Sims a chance to run. Six and a half minutes, less than that now as the clock continues to tick. Again, Travis trailing by six, has three timeouts. Play clock is at seven. Singletary in the backfield next to Njoku and it's a draw play. There goes Singletary, hit low, hit early, loss of one. 
What a play by Connor Tallis. Well, field goal is out of the question. It's a six point lead anyway. We still have 5.53 to go and the clock ticking down. And Travis is simply gonna have to go for it. Got to get the ball to the 27 yard line for a first down. And Joku looking over at the sideline. Play clock at eight. Still hasn't turned around and faced the center. They may have to use a timeout, they do. Timeout, Travis, that's the first of the three allotted in the second half. 5.28 to go, we'll be back. 29 to 23 they trail and they're facing a fourth down and they need 10. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. George Ranch fans, if you were in the gym at George Ranch, I guess three Tuesdays ago for that absolutely scintillating, very dramatic five-set match between your Longhorns and the Ridgepoint Panther girls, I know that one didn't go your way, but you will get another chance to play against Ridgepoint here pretty soon. Wow, I think we brought you the most dramatic regular season volleyball match of all time. It was crazy the way the crowd was. Both of the football teams, George Ranch and Rich Point, showed up. I think every single player was there. Okay, now back to this game, which is very entertaining in its own right. Fourth and ten, and Joku drops back. Here comes the rush. Steps up and throws. Caught inside the 15. Touchdown, Travis! A strike to Robert Sims. A busted coverage of some kind. George Ranch lost track of Sims. And that is a touchdown from 36 yards away. Wow, indeed. It's an Archer Volkswagen touchdown scoring drive that covers eight plays. It goes 67 yards and burns off 320 on the clock. And a 36 yard scoring strike from Anthony Njoku to Robert Sims cousin of Steven Sims, who is now playing on Sundays. The one time, Travis Tiger. Anthony Rubio on to add the extra point that would give Travis the lead by one. He nails it, 30 to 29, 518 to go. What will George Ranch do when they get the football back? We'll return on BikeFortBend.com. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. By FortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County High School Sports. We'll be back here for two games tomorrow. At 11 o'clock, Marshall kicks off with Sharpstown. And then in the nightcap, 6 o'clock kickoff, Hightower and Angleton. Hightower feeling really good about themselves as the Hurricanes went on the road and beat Manville 16-12 last week. Congratulations to the homecoming king, Liam Baje and the Queen, Mia Harris. Antonio Rubio striding toward the football and bang, zoom, but not to the moon. It does go into the end zone, one yard deep, and George Ranch is gonna run it out. That turns out to be something of a mistake, not getting it back to the 20 yard line. Now who came out of there with a football? I believe it was Joseph Wilson.
By the way, I forgot to mention that my niece, uh, Lindsay Beth Green, plays the piccolo in the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks Band. She'll be marching at halftime during that Battle of the Piney Woods, and maybe they even do a little marching before, a little bit of marching after. It is the boldest sound from the oldest town. That is the nickname for the Stephen F. Marching Band. George Ranch running the football on the first play of the drive. Hyman Drinkard cannot get loose. They stop him for a loss of one. Second down and 11 to go for George Ranch. They trail 30 to 29. And I wonder if it might come down to a kick. Edwin Avalos, I'm not really sure what his range is, but George Ranch is a long way from the end zone. Screen pass, incomplete, intended for Drinkard. It was thrown too high, and one of the linebackers for Travis came in late and didn't really have that great of a shot at an interception, but, well, kind of looked that way from the side. Just put it that way. Anthony Oliver might have had a shot at it. Parker Reed as well. It's third down and 11 with 4.36 to go. If Travis can hold on this third down and get the ball back, then they can pound the rock, spin some clock. Murphy drops back after a play fake, laid over the middle, and it's intercepted, Travis, bringing it back, and it's inside the 15, down to the 12, the third pick of the night, and it goes to Parker Reed. And that might be more than George Ranch can overcome. But they have to be thinking, just hold Travis to a field goal. Get the ball back with a decent amount of time left and take their shot. Now Travis, you know, sometimes after you get a demoralizing turnover that really discourages the other team, sometimes it's a good idea to go for the end zone on the very first play, but then time might be the most important factor. Will Travis run the football? Yes, they do. Single Terry straight up the middle and the George Ranch defense is there. Nothing doing, absolutely nothing. Lee Jones in on the tackle for the Longhorns. They have only one timeout, and they won't use it here. But Travis can take the, the clock well down under four minutes before they snap it again. Van Wick with two touchdown catches. Sims with another. Travis leading 30 to 29. They've had three interceptions. And the latest of those by Parker Reed might be the clincher if Travis can do the right thing on offense here. Njoku fakes it to Singletary, keeps it, doesn't get very far. He does slam inside the 10. And it was Judson Mixon who grabbed him by the feet until help arrived. And now it's at three and a half minutes and the clock still ticking. Critical play, third and eight coming for Travis. Joku comes all the way over outside the numbers to talk to his offensive coordinator, Chris Lewis. Play clock at 15 as he gets back to the muddle huddle. Now they break it with 10 seconds to go before they must snap it. Now the play clock is at five, spread formation. Third and eight. And Joku rolling to the right, looking and throws incomplete in the right flat. And that was intended for Van Wick. He was open. It would have been short of the first down, but it does help George Ranch because the incomplete pass stops the clock at 2.55, and they bring on Antonio Rubio for his second field goal of the night, hopefully. And it is a 26-yard attempt, not exactly in the middle of the field, but about six feet to the left of right in the middle. Drew Sissom to hold. This would make it a game where George Ranch would have to have a touchdown. Nice snap and hold. And beautiful. Right down the middle, it's good. 26 yard field goal makes it 33 to 29 and now a field goal does George Ranch no good. They've gotta get it into the end zone before we are done with regulation time or they'll see their first district loss. 
We'll be right back on VibeFordBend.com. First Tire and Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. VibeFortBend.com broadcasts of Fort Bend County High School Sports are brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome. By First Tire and Automotive, make sure your vehicles are in shape for October. First Tire and Automotive has four great locations, including Great Wood. For the best prices on tires, go to FirstTireAndAuto.com. Nick's Italian Restaurant on FM 1464 in Sugarland. At Nick's Italian Restaurant, their family gets bigger every time you stop by by Archer Volkswagen on the southbound side of Highway 59, just inside the Sam Houston Tollway. You'll feel like family at Archer Volkswagen and the Needville Insurance Agency. Visit NeedvilleInsurance.com. All the way into the end zone. George Ranch is going to bring it out after dropping the football inside the five, running left, and won't get past the seven. Jeffrey Ugo Chukwu caught it one yard deep. Well, I, he's, I'll say he tried to catch it one yard deep in the end zone, and he ran parallel to the five-yard line. And you know what? He somehow kept on going, a scrum of players dragging behind him, and he got it out to the 18. I gave up on that play. I should not have. I thought he was going to be down at about the five and no more than the seven, but he kept on going. What an effort by Ugo Chukwu. That's awesome. So he does get it out to, I'm going to say the 18-yard line is where they spot it with 2.34 to go. Drinkard running left. Get hit. The ball is loose. And I think George Ranch got it back because nobody on Travis is celebrating. Drinkard was blasted. Somebody knifed through and got a hat on the football. So with one timeout, George Ranch is not going to use it yet. Time is tick, tick, ticking down towards two minutes to go. It's at 2.09. Referee spots the football, or I should say the umpire spots the football at the 16. It's second down at 11. And George Ranch needs to throw the ball down the field. Murphy throws to the sideline. Catch made, but hit very quickly and driven out of bounds. Nice move by Kyle Kaiser to conserve some time, but the clock has gotten down to 1.50 to go in the game. George Ranch down by four, 33 to 29, and they are still only at their only at their own 22-yard line. Murphy looking over at the sideline. Third down and five. Steps up and gives new instructions. Play clock at 12. In the spread, takes the snap, rolls to the right, looking way down the field, sideline, he throws short and incomplete over the head of his intended receiver, Joseph Wilson. And if Travis can hold right here, the game will be theirs. By the way, I haven't been giving Les Clary uh, quarter scores. Sorry, Les. Should have been doing that, but I'm a crew of one. On fourth down, fourth and five. Throw to the sideline, catch made. First down, George Ranch, they are still alive. And not only was it a catch near the 30 by Joseph Wilson, he also got out of bounds. The clock is at 1.30. No, actually, I guess he didn't get out of bounds. The clock is ticking down. George Ranch coaches, if they knew that, I think would be very upset. The clock is now down to 1.23, and they'll snap it from the 30, and they're going to run the football. Drinker just a gain of four. That's it. The clock now down to 1.15, and will George Ranch take a timeout? Not yet. That was a four-yard pickup at second down and six. 
fake handoff. Murphy throws near the numbers. Hit and dropped short of the first down. Is I'm not sure that, who that was. It's Russell Franklin. Third down and one. We're under a minute to go. George Ranch has to throw the ball down the field, but they run it. They get a first down. They still have that timeout. Haven't used it. The clock will stop while they move the sticks as Drinker runs up the middle to the 48 and gets a first down. The clock at 40.5 seconds to go. They'll quickly assemble and run another play. Run another play. They still have that timeout. Murphy throws. And it's a, an incomplete pass, and that's lucky for George Ranch. It conserves time. Joseph Wilson would only have had a gain of about five yards. Precious seconds are more important than a five-yard gain. So that incomplete pass on first down makes it second and 10. George Ranch has it. They're down by four. 28.9 seconds to go, and they've got to get to the end zone. It's just 52 yards away. Murphy drops back, throwing deep over the middle. Jump ball, catch inside the 20. It's at the 17-yard line, a jump ball, and Caleb Kaiser came down with it, and now George Ranch uses that final timeout. And they have a chance here. The ball is at the 17-yard line. Whoa, Nelly. Xfinity is a proud sponsor of Fort Bend County and Houston area sports on bikefortbend.com with the Xfinity Sports Zone app. Watch multiple games at once and track live stats and scores while watching another game. It's the best sports entertainment experience with Xfinity X1. We will keep it right here. The game hanging in the balance, 21 seconds remaining. George Ranch is out of timeouts. They have the ball at the Travis. 17 yard line. The Travis defense has made a lot of great plays tonight, but they've been out there a long time. What a great catch by Caleb Kaiser to get George Ranch into the red zone for this final 21 second stint. Two receivers to either side of the formation. Drinker is alongside Murphy takes the snap. Murphy rolls to the left. Pumps once. Got to get rid of it. He's sacked. Brought down. It's a one-yard gain. What a nice play by Josh Shimon. And a timeout has been called. But I didn't think that George Ranch had any more timeouts. Travis certainly wouldn't call one. The clock is at 9.2. I don't know how in the world the clock got stopped because I don't know that Travis would have called a timeout. Why would they have? The ball's at the 16-yard line. Somehow a timeout is called. Excuse me just a second. Coach Grimm, did the official signal either way as to who called the timeout? He didn't see it. I didn't see it either. It's going to be second down and nine when they resume. So George Ranch has time for one probably two plays but what they have to do is make sure they don't take a sack and they don't let whoever ends up with the football get get tackled inside the boundary or short of the end zone I guess you could throw over the middle get a first down and then you'd have to very hurriedly get up to the football and spike it and have a chance at one last play we're at 9.2 seconds to go. George Ranch, we know for sure, is out of timeouts. They got to have a touchdown. And now Travis takes a timeout. We'll take it with him. This is VibeFortBend.com. First Iron Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. This is one of those games where it comes down to one play maybe two. 
But George Ranch still has possession of the football and still has time. They might get two plays off here, but they've got to have a touchdown. The ball is at the 16-yard line. Nine and two-tenths seconds to go. Murphy at quarterback, dropping back, throwing end zone. It's going to be a jump ball. Kaiser, he dropped it. He was out of bounds anyway. And we've got 4.4 seconds to go. There will be another play. That football led him a little bit too far, and there's no way that he could have caught it in bounds. But George Ranch wisely threw it to a place where they knew that if it didn't get them the touchdown, they would still have time remaining. And I think we have two linemen whose equipment is kind of entangled, one with another. And they've got to separate them, too. They're like conjoined twins. And uh, the umpire is trying to get them disentangled. That's an unusual thing to happen with 4.4 seconds to go. And unless there's a defensive penalty here, this will be the final play of the game. Okay, they finally got him disentangled. And a helmet came off of number 70 for George Ranch. That's Hanzaya Rana. He has to leave the game. Third down and nine, but the important thing is 4.4 seconds. Probably the last play of the game. George Ranch, a touchdown would win it for them. Murphy takes the snap, rolls to his right, being chased, looks end zone, gets rid of it in desperation. It is intercepted by Travis! Tigers win! Israel Akinlavi, second interception of the night and the fourth of the game for the Tigers. And they come away with the win, 33 to 29. That was a heart stopper. Akin Lobby cut in front of the man he was covering, and what a play to bring the Travis Tigers the victory on homecoming night. Are you not entertained? Oh boy, I am sure that you are. We'll step aside and be back to wrap this one up. Fightcourtben.com. It doesn't get any better than this. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe View program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vite Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Great sportsmanship shown by the players from Travis and the players from George Ranch as they come across the field along the 50-yard line, shaking hands. What a great football game this was and a dramatic homecoming win for the Travis Tigers. And this game may loom very large at the end of the season because we know these are playoff quality teams out of District 26A. You got George Ranch, you got Travis, you got Ridge Point. And for George Ranch, if they don't end up as one of the top two teams in District 26A, that means that they probably have to play the they probably have to play the Tompkins Falcons or the Katy Tigers in the first round of the playoffs, which is kind of a poison pill. So let's listen to the Travis Tigers school song as they enjoy their homecoming win.
Oh, the joyous feeling of winning your homecoming game. Uh, you know, it's kind of like Winston Churchill once said, you know, uh, there is nothing, there is nothing on this earth more exhilarating than to be shot at and missed. And so the Travis Tigers were effectively shot at and missed on the final play. Israel Akinlabi with the clutch interception to deny George Ranch a victory. By FortBend.com broadcasts of Fort Bend County High School Sports are brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome. By First Tire and Automotive, make sure your vehicles are in shape for the fall. First Tire and Automotive has four great locations, including First Colony. All of them open Monday through Saturday, including the one in Greatwood. For the best prices on tires, go to firsttireandauto.com. By Nick's Italian Restaurant on FM 1464 in Sugarland, just a few hundred feet north of Austin High School. At Nick's Italian Restaurant, their family gets bigger every time you stop by. By Archer Volkswagen on the southbound side of Highway 59, just inside the Sam Houston Tollway, open since 1956 and ready to serve you. You'll feel like family at Archer Volkswagen. By the Needville Insurance Agency. Bradley Stavenaugh and his team are your hometown trusted agents. Sure, Flo's funny. I get it. She makes me laugh. The gecko's cute and a uh, nice accent and everything. But they won't have the best rate for you. You won't find it in your mailbox either. You'll find it with the Needville Insurance Agency. Call Bradley Stavenaugh and his team. 979-793-7411 or visit needvilleinsurance.com. And Office Depot in Sugarland, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace, taking care of business every day so VipeFortBend.com can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. So tomorrow we'll be with you for the 11 o'clock kickoff, Marshall and Sharpstown, and we'll also have the game between Hightower and Angleton at 6 o'clock. It's a Saturday doubleheader. Our final score here, Travis by the skin of their claws. 33 to 29 over George Ranch. For everybody on the Vibe team, James Green, Les Clary, Patrick Kinnick, who watched this as a dad. Well, everybody who's been a part of this one, thank you so much for listening, especially you. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Good night and God bless everybody.